Live versus recorded content marketing. Hi, I'm Brian Pombo. Welcome back to Brian J. Pombo Live. I wanted to talk about live versus recorded content marketing. So live content marketing is when you're doing something live, when you're, when you're sending it out without edits, out for the world to see. Oftentimes there's chat associated with it. It doesn't matter whether you're doing a Facebook Live or some type of live stream on Twitch. This has been a hot thing to do for a while. When I first started doing these talks, the reason why it's called Brian J. Pombo Live is because we started doing them all live. Uh, live uh, initially over Facebook and then we'd take the recordings and we'd spread it out. So there's no reason why you can't do both. But question is what's what works best right what what's the hottest thing and I'm here to tell you I don't know <laughs> it could be at any given moment it could be one or the other it could be uh, gaining more attraction either uh, from directly from the market or from the platform that you're delivering it on certain platforms might be favoring it. Like for a while there, Facebook was favoring live content and it still does to a certain extent. You gotta do all just the right things just to get the, the best favor, meaning they're gonna put you in front of more people because you're live more often. I was doing it quite a bit often and if you aren't doing any type of paid ads with it, you tend to not end up with the bump that people who are paying are able to achieve. This is a couple things that I found over time that uh, tends to be the case, but there are many live platforms out there. Twitch is one that, that thrives off of uh, live video. Uh, I remember quite a few years back there was Periscope and Meerkat and all these other ones that were out there that got bought up by the larger companies uh, because they were saying, oh, live is the thing. Live is the next big thing. You, you got to take the big picture view on these things though. I mean, is one ever going to really overtake the other? Uh, no, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, old radio shows. Ever since I was a kid, uh, my grandparents first told me how when they were kids, nobody had televisions. Television was a very new thing, and every, but everyone had radios or most people had radios and you could listen that's how you got your entertainment. Your daily entertainment was gotten over the radio, so they'd have the same type of programs that you have on TV today, except they had them on the radio without any pictures. So I got into old time radio, which is kind of the term that they call it, OTR, old time radio. I got into that years ago when I was just a little kid. And I've always had a fascination. You can see the old radio back here. What's really interesting is most of these shows, and I mean most, all through up until the 50s, uh, they were almost all live programming. It was very rare that it wasn't live programming. In fact, it was more often that they would take a script and have different people in different localities do the exact same script versus having a recording that they then spread about. They started doing what, and they referred to it as transcription back then. They started transcribing programs and sending them out in very specific situations, uh, but it wasn't the usual. The usual thing was to have live actors, live sound effects, live music. Uh, actually, a lot of the music was recorded, uh, but everything else was live. And they, if it was recorded music, the recorded music was played live with the live actors. And so live has always been around. It's always existed. Same thing is true of television, early television, even though recording was becoming uh, more and more often used on the radio, early television was all live. <laughs> it was all live and, and most of it was local. And so as time goes on, that, that's why in early television you didn't see very many cartoons because recordings were so rare. Uh, once they figured out how to take the recordings like they would have on film and so forth and how to get that over to television, that became more of a common thing where you'd see old movies and old cartoons being replayed and then they started developing cartoons just for TV and so you started having recording and then recording was the thing. When I was a kid, everything on television, it wasn't live, it wasn't live, but it was put out during certain times and you either caught it at that time or you missed it, <laughs> okay? Uh, you know, people with a, a good size money had a 
VCR when they first came out. They had VCRs. They had video recorders where you could record things. You could program it to record at a certain time so that you never miss anything. That was the great promise of these things. Uh, no one ever recorded them. <laughs> they very rarely programmed their VCRs to be able to do these type of things, but it was, it was a fun idea, and it was really the future and then they came out with TiVo where everything started being recorded and then they came out with on demand you know 20 years ago or whatever when they first started coming out with on demand television where you can watch things when you want now look at it today with YouTube everything else you can watch things whenever you want anytime everything's on demand everything you can find anything you can think of online somewhere and it's on demand legal or illegal you can find it so everything's on demand, everything's recorded, and now people are starting to go back to liking live things. It's this constant back and forth. It will always happen. It has always happened. What I'm saying is, don't worry too much about it. Find out what your audience likes and go with it. Find out what fits within your function as a business, how you enjoy putting out content marketing, and fit it within that. You can always... Yeah, you can, I hate to say it, you can take recorded stuff and make it appear to be live. You can funnel it through these live platforms and make it appear to be live. A lot of people doing that. You can take live stuff that's been recorded You can re and you can record it and you can put that on on-demand platforms like YouTube and you have it from that point forward. There's no end to what you can do. Find out what your audience wants and see if you could deliver it to them. And when I say audience, I'm talking, you're in market. Who are the people? Who are your customers, your prospective customers, and so forth? Find out what they want. Find a way to get it to them. And if you make them happy, you'll be made happy, right? That's the name of the game. Simple concept. Don't get too bogged down in the details. Everyone gets all caught up with the latest shiny thing, acting like the principles have changed. The principles haven't changed. People will always want what they don't have. They'll always want something that appears to be different, even though it's just like... Everything before it just it's the opposite of what they're currently focused on. So they want the grass is always greener on the other side. You know what I mean? So hopefully that makes sense. Hey, if you want to find out how to really develop to take these principles that never go away and how to apply them to your business so that you don't get caught up with all the shiny objects, go check out my book all on strategy, how to strategize using principles, nine ways to Amazon Proof Your Business. You can get your own free copy at amazonproofbook.com. We'll be back here tomorrow. In the meantime, you get out there and let the magic happen.